it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. Slasher films. They offer a complex mix of thrills, suspense, and psychological release. While they might not be everybody's cup of tea, for many they provide a unique and entertaining cinematic experience that taps into primal emotions and curiosity about the darker aspects of human nature. But do you ever think about where they're set? Why do they always seem to be in a similar location? Tonight's short story may provide an answer. Slasher Town by Cherry the Weirdo. There's a place somewhere in this world, difficult to find through conventional methods. It isn't in any map, and there's no register of its existence. But I can assure you that it's there, waiting for you to find it and drag you down with it. Well, it's a town of many names, full of people oblivious to the fact. Everyone thinks it has a name. Every town has one, after all. But this one has as many names as inhabitants. Someone may believe its name is Cherry Town. Another may think it's Woodsboro. There's even a possibility of someone thinking its name is Haddonfield. Think of a name, and someone probably believes it's the right one. Despite this, everyone remains oblivious. None notice the discrepancy. It's natural, of course. After all, it's not the only thing they don't notice. However, a common nickname for this town between citizens is Slasher Town. Natural, considering the most prevalent feature of this place. It's worthy of a slasher movie. Well, lots of them, actually. Considering that it's full of killers. Not uh, normal killers. You know the ones. Whichever kind you're thinking of. Angry partners, negligent parents, untreated mentally ill people, pedophiles, drug dealers, or even just your classic serial killers. Of course, some of them are like this. But no, the killers here are something more. I'm talking about murderers resembling the ones in the cinema. Ridiculous killers, if you may. Cannibals, revived corpses, paranormal creatures, cult members... All things you'd find in a B-movie. Some of these things, of course, do exist. And some of them aren't exactly slashes. But it's strange to find so many of them at the same place and time. Especially considering how little this town is, and how it's not just a couple, but, well, a large number of beings. I believe the nickname came from simplicity. Most of these creatures are killers. They're meant to end you. So I guess Slasher Town came first to Horror Town or Killer Town. It's been called this for years, and changing it now doesn't really make sense. Now, to add to the strangeness of this place, it seems to be stuck in a limbo between the late 90s and early 2000s, technologically at least. Now, you wouldn't see a modern laptop, an iPad, or even the current layout of some websites here. Technology seems to stop there, or at the very least, is trying to recreate the kind from decades ago. Which is not to say some apps or websites don't exist here. Just that they are adapted to the decade. This applies to movies too. They're also released in this place, but the technology, filming or even performance style is changed to the trends of the time. How this happens is a mystery of the place, one of many. Mysteries like where is this place located? How come it always appears to be autumn? What makes this town like this? probably the most important of them all. How does no one seem to notice the danger they're facing? Well, it's a valid doubt, because nothing is strange to the people in Slasher Town. Brutality is the norm. Finding out your child is murdering people on the street, something that should make you suffer, wondering what you did wrong. Well, to them, it's like finding out they want to be a musician. Sure, it's not a stable job, but everyone's doing it. Probably just a phase. Jobs like necromancers are considered logical in this place. Cults are accepted as any other religion, even if people personally disagree with their view of life. For them, it's just like being Jewish, Catholic, Islam, any average religion of our world. 
Abnormal creatures, while strange, are far more accepted here. They don't question it. They don't question anything. Their world is absurd, and yet they're immersed in this absurdity. That doesn't mean they don't grieve for their murdered loved ones. That doesn't mean they don't fear for their lives. But aside from their inner circle, they don't mind the horrific things around them. They don't care about the existence of serial killers, monsters, spirits, anomalies, or whatever else is dangerous in their town. No, nope, it's normal for them. And the police won't do anything about it. Why should they? They're as oblivious as the rest of them. They just keep on, trying to survive, but not trying to change things. Maybe they enjoy killing themselves. After all, they're not immune to the nature of the place. And if everyone is doing it, how bad can it be? But when their loved ones are damaged, when they lose their attachments, something in these people is altered. The curtain of normality is broken. They start questioning again. They question this place, the way things are, the real weight of their actions. Lots of people die here on the regular. Is it perhaps too regular? Should it be regular? Is feeling like this regular? This pain? Knowing they can't come back? They were my friends, my family. We lived together, we messed around. Moving, camping, unplanned sleepovers, hangouts. I lived the world with them. And now I can't anymore. They don't live anymore. How can people feel this regularly? Am I the only one feeling like this? Why should I feel like this? Everyone seems to be okay with this. And then, as quickly as their freedom came, it escaped. I firmly believe every resident felt like this at least once. And they are humans, to some extent. But they all dismiss the idea for their own reasons. Maybe for the standard of their society. Maybe because they're murderers themselves. Maybe they're afraid of changing, of recognizing how bad they were. Or maybe it's just more simple than that. Maybe it's just the town acting out. Maybe we just blame something else, something that's not us, so we can easily go to sleep. It doesn't really matter, because we're likely never going to know. And regardless, this is still Slasher Town's biggest mystery. Well, there are multiple ways to travel to Slasher Town. If you really want to go. I must warn you, however, that none of them are easy and you may have to dedicate a lot of time to it. Most even depend on chance. But one way to get here is with directions coming from a living citizen of Slasher Town. Getting them is fairly difficult, but I assure you, lots of them are online. They're like you and me, taste-wise at least. They go around the internet like anyone else. But precisely for that... They're difficult to find. They don't go around telling people where they live. And even if they did, it won't be of much help, since the place is referred to through multiple names. The only way you could find out about their town is if you asked directly. Which risks you getting blocked for asking something too personal. Especially if you only started talking to them because you suspected them to be a slasher town resident. Ways to identify Slasher Town residents may be as follows. 1. Pay special attention to their description of technology. If they describe an older model as new, or complain about a bug that's already been fixed, or maybe never even existed, this happens often with newer sites, then there's a possibility for this user to be stuck at a different time period. This could indicate them to be a Slasher Town resident. 2. Listen closely to their movie descriptions. Our movies are different in Slasher Town. They're all adapted to the decade they're trapped in. So if they try to convince you to watch a movie, do it. Watch it. And then discuss it with them. Ask about the dialogue, the cinematography, the dress code. Whatever you think would change if it happened in another decade. Whatever you do, to make the conversation sound as natural as possible. They're a person, after all. Not above freaking out after an odd conversation. 3. Think about how often they joke about death, murder, or other grim topics. This doesn't always mean the user is a resident. 
However, it is important to know that residents have normalized even the most horrible of the atrocities, so it shouldn't be surprising to find them lightly joking about this. I would also recommend paying attention to their reaction if some morbid event gets brought up. Number 4. Inconsistent answers about their region. Slasher Town is in any place at a strange time. It's not unusual for their time zone to change without their knowledge. 5. Showing little to no interest in the supernatural. Well, everyone can be indifferent to the unknown, but when they treat it like something normal, something they've already experienced a thousand times, then you may have to consider the possibility of them being a resident. 6. Sharing violent or abnormal stories with you as regular anecdotes. Similar to the last point, be also aware there are odd details in their seemingly ordinary stories. The little things may be an indication of something bigger, something like what you were searching for. And number seven, generally oblivious to the world around them. This may not always be the case, but residents are usually isolated from the world outside their town. They only care about the events of their town, oblivious to important political or cultural events. This is unconscious of them, and natural even. Try asking them about a widely known scandal, and if they're unable to even recognize it, there's a possibility they are a resident. Now, if the user shows multiple of these characteristics, you may be in front of an actual resident. You'd now have to convince them to give you the address. Doing this is no easy task, and I can't provide a guide for it. Just keep in mind that, as strange as they may be, these are people, and logically they wouldn't like to give you their address. Getting it is your chore, and I can only wish you the best of luck. The address will only work if it was given by a resident. It doesn't matter how ridiculous the directions may sound, you'll get there if they were given by a resident. Only if they were given to you or someone that you're going with. Getting the address by a third party won't work if they aren't with you. Oh, there are other ways to access the town, but they're more difficult. You can always try to find it on your own. It is difficult, I'd say nearly impossible. There's a slight chance that you can find it driving alone on a lonely road. Another way, a slightly more complicated way, but also a bit more fruitful, is wanting to escape your small town. And for this, you have to live in one, which is already not an easy request. It's more of a chance thing, really, honestly. I wouldn't recommend moving to a small town just for this, considering the chances. But if you're lucky enough to already live in one, then you can try to fill the second and last requirement. Wanting to leave. Now, it has to come naturally. You have to genuinely want to escape your small, ordinary town with all you've got. Despise it, want to burn it, have a genuine desire for every inhabitant there to rot. And then, perhaps, you'll feel it. You'll feel the urge to run, run away and pass the limits of the town. If it's true, you'll run forever, at least you'll feel like it. You'll run and run till you arrive in a small town. One that you know wasn't there before. One that shouldn't be there. The one you were looking for. These are two highly improbable methods, but chances increase if you personally know someone who's already a resident. By the off chance you arrive, don't worry, you'll already have a place to live. You're going to need it, because leaving is as difficult as entering. And why would you want to leave anyway? After all, it's your home now, and living in this place is as normal as living in any other. Okay, a shorter one for you this evening, but that one kind of piqued my interest. Um, some interesting uh, thoughts on uh, the origins of slasher towns in general. Of course, a simple case of uh, it's easy to film in a location like that with that kind of thing going on. So, anyway... 
what am I talking about? Yeah, just um, a short one there for you this evening, but I really quite enjoyed the premise of it, and I hope you did too. Uh, thanks once again for all of the feedback on my uh, Hellhound story. Um, yeah, it was quite descriptive. I was going for sort of a Lovecraftian feel, and um, that can sort of uh, lead to overuse of adjectives and adverbs. And um, as I was actually reading it, I'm like, oh my God, I've overdone this quite a lot. Anyway, thanks for all the feedback. Um, I'm still a novice writer. That's only like the fourth or fifth story I think I've ever written to completion. So yeah, thanks for the feedback. Um, I'll bear everything in mind for the future and there will be more of my original work coming on the channel soon. Ish. Maybe. <laughs> well, my dear friends, till the next time, very, very sweet dreams. Bye-bye. Back again soon with something new. Don't know what, but see you soon. <laughs>